What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers today, a special episode. You know, we do hip hop over here. We also do a little bit of politics. For the first time on the Mike Power Show, I found somebody to come and sit and talk to me from the other side of the aisle. Right now, you're looking at Mike Powers, the lefty, and we're going to talk to somebody that might be considered on the right. It's my man, Nate, a.k.a. the professor, owner of Sue Aromatics as well. Um, You sell the candles, right? So you got. can you show me the candle you were showing me right before we started? Yeah, yeah. This one, uh, as I said, this was our signature, our top seller. It's called Crumbling Peaches and Herb. And uh, man, it's an inspiration from uh, like, Out- it's an inspiration from Outkast, of course. Song from the, uh, 94 off their debut album, um, Crumbling Herb. So I got a mixture of peach nectar and hemp in this one. People really it, love. Classic cut. Outkast's first four albums is classic, by the way. First four? You think four? I think the first four was classic. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, Southern Playalistic, Equimini. Ooh, what's the other two? Uh, AT, AT Aliens. AT Aliens. And Which is my favorite. Yep. And the fourth one. That was uh, Stank On You. Classics. Yeah. Okay. All those are classics. But so the real reason that you're here is because I saw you in a comment section somewhere. I forget what I said. You said something. And I was like, yo, let's do it on camera. And you're the first person in three years. In three years to come on here and to toe the line for the other side. So I certainly appreciate your presence. I want to get right into it. So for sure. it's safe to call you a Trump supporter. Is that correct? Trump supporter. Um, I guess it would be safe, safe to say that, you, being you, that you that's who Trump? I would support. What's you that? voted for Trump? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. You voted for Trump in 16 and 20? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, all right. So, and Trump is a candidate for the nomination on the Republican ticket for 2024. He's At got this a point, lead yes. in the polls right now yeah. over all his competitors coming in uh, second, way behind Trump, Ron DeSantis from Florida. So right. are you looking to support Trump for the 2024 nomination Republican ticket? At this point, undoubtedly, I could say yes. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Anybody that supports Trump, I find that wild. If you're black, I really consider it wild. So this is like a double whammy. So let's start with what happened on January 6th. Let's just start right there. January 6th, our side calls it an insurrection. The Republicans like to soften it up a little bit. They want to call it a riot. Um... Do you find that January 6th was a, a insurrection against our democracy? Um, it was out of order by by whatever name you want to call it. The shit was out of order uh, to begin with. And, as you know, like I told you, man, just because right now, if I say I might support Trump, I ain't no car carrying member of no Republicans. It just makes sense to me right now. So to align myself with the thoughts and actions of what went over on January 6th, um, I probably seen the shit on the news and like, ha, just laughed at it for what it was. Cause I mean, we've seen stuff like that throughout the years and people didn't label it. And one thing I would say is that, um, how can you dif- differentiate your politics based on what quote unquote, you just said any black person that would vote for Trump? Why couldn't they mutually exist? Why can't they exist outside of each other? You mean, why can't a black person be a Republican? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it sounds like that's the, the the basis of what your, your statement that you made. Yeah, I mean, I kind of am. I kind of am on that. Like, yo, how can the? But I I have a easier time accepting a black Republican, which to me is different than a black Trump supporter. I think Trump is outside the bounds of all politics, right? I don't really, I don't consider him a real conservative. You know, he's not a conservative in the in the ilk of Bush or Reagan, people like that. Um, you know, they want to call him a populist. But on January 6th, he did call his supporters to the Capitol to, in an effort to stop the certification of Joe Biden becoming president. Right. Right. That happened. Um, he tweeted days before he said, meet me January 6th is going to be wild. Right. He had everybody up there at the podium. Rudy Giuliani said, let's have trial by combat. Trump said, you're going to lose your country if you don't fight for it. He said, we're going to march down to the Capitol. I'll be with you. He wasn't with him. 
and Proud Boys tore down the barricades, right? And they overran the police and a lot of police got injured in the, in the process. Um, and they were inside the building. They had a hangman's noose, a hangman's gallows out there saying, hang Mike Pence. He had him going through the hallway. People defecated in the hallway. People broke into Nancy Pelosi, the speaker's office. So the goal was to stop the certification of the election. That's, in my eyes, treasonous, is it not? You make yeah, by that definition, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, okay, so, but and Trump was the leader of that. You would consider him the leader of that? Somebody who was I don't think his, if he was if he didn't call them to come, they would not have been there. He was the one who told them to come. Yeah, and unfortunately, people acted. If you say that he told people to come, people acted on that. And there's some some far, far, far right people out there looking to align themselves with the ideology of, of of what Trump is. And, and I think in their mind, they perceive it that Trump is out for them. They might be quote unquote racist. So he's one of us, but I don't necessarily, I've never seen Trump to be, to be racist. I don't, the man, he's never said anything that I could say that I was offended by, you know? Okay. Well, what about when the Charlottesville event happened where I think it was Proud Boys that marched in Charlottesville. Then they had counter protesters that came out against the Proud Boys. Uh, they had the Proud Boys had the tiki torches and all that. And somebody got ran over, right? And killed during that whole thing. And then Trump came on TV and he said it was very fine people on both sides. Mm -hmm. So one side is neo-Nazis. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? One side was screaming, yeah. you will not replace us. That's a Nazi chant. And the other side was counter protesters. So what he said is very far people on both sides. That's sort of racist, right? I mean. It could be it could be perceived to be racist, but 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 I, I have to remind I have to remind people that anything that Trump possibly could say, have said, could say or have said is no different than anything that Biden or somebody on the other side have, has said over the years. OK, well, well, let's get we'll get into Biden and into some more Biden in a minute. Right. Well, right. OK, so you voted for Trump at 16. You voted for him in 2020. Right now, you got him at the top of your list of 2024. So he had a chance to govern. What exactly did Trump do in terms of policy that you liked? Well, you know, a lot of a lot of people might form their formulate their their political opinions or or whatever they they do on on based on the whole body of a people. I can just say personally, something as simple simplistic as looking at my own financial situation my own financial statements the, most people like to do they like to look at what president was in office and judge how they were doing personally or how they were doing with their family at that time and i just happened to look the other day through my what you call this and the certain dates and i'm like damn and i never noticed it before i'm spe speaking of my 401k or whatever and my situation like that I'm, i never realized I, I really it was a specific period i really wasn't looking at it like that and I looked the other day going through the history and I'm like, damn, Trump was in office then. And I look at it where it went flat and where it stayed. Look at how the economy do, which is most people look at the economy and judge the, the, the president's job or a candidate, potential candidate on, on, on economy, what they can do for the economy. And I know personally. Um, looking at that, that type of thing, Trump was in office at the time. Trump was in office at the time. Um, so, so based on that alone, I mean, that's just something tangible. That's just something tangible that, you know, something that simplistic alone is, is some is, is enough to look at. If it can be said that Trump is responsible for that. Now there's a couple of different ways I can look at this. So, um, let's say inflation and things that have to do with the economy those would be what we call probably lagging indicators, which means somebody will put something in place, right? And then the result will happen later on. So if I sign the legislation today, right, most mm -hmm. of the time, 
your life won't change tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? It'll take some time. Exactly. So if we're saying that, let's start with this. Because if somebody says that Trump or Reagan or Bush or Obama had a great policy towards economics or uh, foreign policy, domestic policy, whatever it might be, then we need to point to the legislation that was signed by that president. Because that's how uh, legislators or president changes the dynamic in the real world. But I would say, what legislation did Trump sign Mm -hmm. that improved the economy? Like, well, see, I don't, there's no legislation that he signed. There, well, I'm trying to figure out what this magical thing that he did that increased your 401k. So now let me take it back to here when we talk about lagging indicators. So Obama was in office right before Trump. Right. Right. And so the way the GDP growth and the wage growth was steadily ticking up under Obama, right? Ticking, ticking, ticking. So when Trump gets in office, you just get such a continuation. Right. In my opinion. Right. And so now when you see something going wrong in the economy, when Joe Biden comes in, right, this first, second month Joe Biden's in the office, you got all kind of inflation. That's not Joe. Joe didn't implement anything. Right. That's the, that's the carryover from what Trump had left over. Right. They blame they blame Biden for inflation. But inflation is a, it was a global phenomenon, right? Supply chains was backed up, right? We had just come out of the COVID thing, and now everybody want to go buy stuff, right? And so now you got all these dollars out there, but you ain't we not keeping up with the production of it, mm. right? That's not Joe. That's not Joe. And then Trump always said he got the lowest unemployment in fifty years. Ain't that what he always said? More, I've heard him say that lowest black unemployment ever. Right. So now we had like 3.3 unemployment, 3.6 unemployment, something like that. Last month, well, in May 2023, economy added 390,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. Well, people people had to people had to go get jobs because people didn't have jobs. Right. So if you got if he's adding 390,000 jobs in a month, that's a good metric. So you would give the, the president credit for adding jobs. When those vacancies were already there, when you go back to 2020, people weren't working. You had shortages in all kinds of different industries. Well, look, I got to give him credit because if unemployment goes up to 8% or 12%, mm-hmm. he going to get the blame. Mm. Right? So if I'm the coach of the Lakers, my team win, I get credit. Yeah. When they lose, I get the blame. Right? So we're going to try to blame Joe Biden for inflation, which it really wasn't his fault, right? Mm. But we got to give them credit when things go right in the economy. Right. right. So that's that's what I always try to get to. Like, what is this thing that Trump actually did? So let me look. I'm looking at a couple of notes over here. You this guy Stuart Rose from the Proud Boys. He's the guy with the patch. I have his picture on the screen right here. Um, but. He got sentenced to 18 years for seditious conspiracy. It's like a couple of weeks ago. He was okay. involved with the riots. I think okay. he's the leader of the Proud Boys or Oath Keepers, one of those. 18 years. You think that's a fair sentence? 18 years? What was he convicted on? He was convicted of seditious conspiracy. He never even went to the Capitol. But conspiracy, right? Conspiracy is an agreement between two or more people to conduct some kind of nefarious illegal mm-hmm. act. So right. they're saying that he kind of orchestrated his people to go into the Capitol and try to disrupt the certification of the election. And he got 18 years for that. No, he got the not, longest sentence out of anybody. That's not so a far. fair sentence. For, for, for that, I wouldn't consider that a fair sentence at all. You, okay, so let me ask you this. What do you think would have happened if they would have made it to the House chamber and got on that floor? Do you think what, what they was going to do to Nancy Pelosi or Mike Pence if they would have caught up with him? Well, at, at this point, I don't, I don't know how constructive hypotheticals would be. Um, well, they were saying hang Mike Pence, and you got people on video saying, "Where's that bitch, Nancy Pelosi? Bring her out." Where are you, Nancy? We're looking for you. She's in jail. Nancy. Oh, Nancy. And you know, and and I can grin. That's why I, was, I I grin and I can laugh right now because it's, it's like I told you. I could understand some of the shit is made made for TV. 
So when it comes to um my political thoughts and feelings, like I said, it's just based on personally. It's based on personally. A lot of this stuff is over. It's over my head. I look at it. I can look at TV and I I can I can know what's bullshit and what's not. Um so it's like a drama being played out. And that's how I look at it. It doesn't affect me emotionally one way or the other. Yeah, but when you say I'm about to vote for Trump mm -hmm. again, then you, in my eyes, you might be assisting in putting this whole experiment called democracy in peril. We might lose our freedoms behind a guy like Trump getting into office. He wants to be a dictator. Oh, uh, as opposed to the other side. Yeah, let's get into Joe Biden. What's what's what, what's dictatorial about Joe Biden? And I mean, you just you, what you just said. Uh, we I had a discussion with somebody last week, and you just said something about our freedoms. And I, I have a person that I know that, and quite often, he always says, "Y'all better watch yourself. If they want, they can. If they want, they can take our voting rights and put us back into." And I'm like, "And you would allow that? You would allow somebody to actually?" Take your voting rights, put you back in slavery. As a man, you would allow that. You're personally responsible for yourself. Well, I don't know so much about necessarily going back to slavery, but we are a country of laws. I've and heard people, people I've, I've heard people say if they did this, then they can do that. They can come on, man. But I mean, are, is it completely out of the realm of possibility? I mean, they're rolling back rights left and right. I mean, Roe v. Wade was the law of the land for 15 years. And, you know, they sent that back to the states, essentially, you know, overturning Roe versus Wade. So, you know, you got some states having a six week abortion ban. Some people don't even know they're pregnant at six weeks. Mm -hmm. So you got different state legislatures around the country that's saying we want to take control in Louisiana. Are you from Louisiana? That's my home state. Yeah. They just passed a law in Louisiana. It's a one parish out there in Louisiana where they're unsealing the juvenile records. Right. And they're only doing it for one parish. And the mm. one parish has got the most black people in it. I feel, I need to have that in my notes. But had you heard about that? That happened just recently. Recently. I hadn't heard it yet. Um, yeah. So they're gonna sure I'll be hearing it soon. Right. So your, your juvenile record used to go away. Right. But now they're going to unseal it. But not for the whole state of Louisiana. they just going to do it for this one parish that's got all these black people in it. That's what can happen. That's why elections have consequences. So yeah, I think that I think that our danger, our, our democracy is in danger if we get Trump back in office because he wants to be an authoritarian figure. He don't like the four years and then you hand it off to somebody else. He wants to be the man until he push up daisies. That's what he wants to do. When did he ever say that, bro? He he respected his four years that he he just he just completed a couple years ago. And he's he, the first he's the first president in the history of America to not go along with a peaceful transfer of power. He tried everything he could to stay in there. They tried the fake electors plot, where they were gonna bring in the fake electors, right? That you want to talk about racism? Mm. Watch this. He said that there was corruption and the counting of the votes, right? And where did he say that corruption took place at? Detroit. Atlanta. I can see it. Milwaukee. And Philly. I can see it. And let me tell you, you but just look, named... Wait, 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 yeah, go ahead, sorry. But those are... Heavily black populated areas. He's saying black folk cheat. Nah, I don't think he went that far to say that. He only saying the corruption is in Philly. He's saying the corruption is in Detroit. You it don't get much blacker than Detroit. Right, right. Right? Philly, black as hell. ATL, we already know. And Milwaukee. Right? So not only that. So if any Republican won, them Republicans own those same tickets in those cities. They're not saying nothing wrong with their election. But the one that they're having a problem with is just the one man, Trump. Y'all cheated Trump. These four places that got all these black people, right? He the the the, the lady named Ruby, I think down in Georgia, he tried to say they was moving boxes out and moving boxes in. 
ruin this whole lady. She was getting death threats, this old black lady. You ever met an election worker? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. You go down to your, your election office where you got to cast your ballot, them black people that's there and white people that's there, those are volunteers. Yeah, yeah. They just want to come do their job. Yeah. Right. They're not over there cheating and stuffing, trying to. Oh, you know what? No. Trump. No, no, nope, no. Nope. Give me the Biden ballots. That's not happening. But this is what Trump is saying. This is what they said. The voting machines was a problem. Right. And then Fox News gets sued. By Dominion and loses almost a billion dollars. 60 court cases. Trump says one thing in public. When his lawyers go to court, the lawyers to ask Rudy Giuliani, are you alleging fraud? Rudy say, no. But as soon as he leave the courtroom, he going to say it's all kind of fraud. You know what the difference is? In court, you're under oath. You lie in there, you go mm. to jail for perjury, mm. right? So, you, But you're going to say all this shit with your chest on camera because nobody can't cuff you up. I can say I dance better than Michael Jackson. Nobody can't do nothing to me right now, right? Right? I go in court and try to make that same claim. It's a whole different story, right? So he don't have any proof that the his own election people that worked for his administration said, I think it was the Homeland Security guy. It was the most secure and safest election in American history. It's what his own people said. Supreme Court, six to three. They won't even take up these cases. He put three of them on the, on the bench. They won't take up the case. Bill Barr, his attorney general, said his claims was garbage. His own attorney general said this. So where are we getting this idea that somehow the election was stolen from Donald? You think the election was stolen? I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't say stolen, but personally, I saw some shady. I saw shady shit going on, too. But like being what? that I live in the metro Atlanta area. And you specifically mentioned uh, Detroit earlier. I remember election day watching Trump was up by a wide margin in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I remember them having a lady getting, um, what's, what's, um, what's the county Detroit is, is Wayne County. I think it was the black lady they had on the new. I remember Trump was up by a wide margin in that county at that particular time. And, and this is another issue that I have. Being that election day is election day, it used to be everything used to be done that night. Why do we go over to the next day now with county? And I remember Trump was up by a wide margin in Detroit, in, in, in that county, in Michigan. And I remember them asking the lady, so when will you be finished? And she said, well, we don't know when we're going to have answers. And that struck me right there. It's like, how do you not have the results? It's already election day night. Um, and just being in Atlanta, I just see how, how they take how they've taken in Metro Atlanta, you know, I've, I've been voting for 20 something years, man. I vote going back to 96. Um, I, I think I voted for Clinton in 96, voted for Bush in 2000. Um, and I, I've just kind of seen Metro Atlanta take it to where they've injected race into the political landscape. To the point now where people automatically identify, just like with the introduction, if you black, then you can't be a Republican. You can't no, possibly no, no, no. vote. No, nope. possibly you vote can be Republican. Republican. I don't. I'm not. Oh, I, you say Trump? Okay. okay. The, the, the whole Trump thing. Even mm -hmm. if you black and you Republican, I I still want to have that conversation. But mm -hmm. then I understand more. But the black and the Trump thing, I think, is weird. But so you think them black folks in Atlanta purposely cheated Donald Trump out of votes? Let me ask you yeah. this. Yeah, you I would say that. Yeah. You think they did? Yeah. I've 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 seen I know how the process works. But um, wouldn't, shouldn't that go to court? If this fraud, shouldn't somebody take that evidence to court and get somebody convicted? Well, let me let me also bring up bring up another question though, is that Trump and this boogeyman factor, like he's 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 a boogeyman looming over everybody's head. But yet we seem to forget just 20 years earlier, the roles were reversed in Florida. Some right. people said some but people said one party cheated. The other people said, no, he didn't. And we have evidence to support that the 20, the 2000 election was indeed stolen. 
when did this evidence come about? I've never seen the evidence, bro. It happened. It, it happened on national TV. So let me let me break it down. Let me break it down for you. Do you know what the Supreme Court's case was called? Uh, that gave Bush the victory. Now, what was that? I can't remember. It was called. It was a Supreme Court case. Was called Bush v. Gore. Okay. Bush v. Gore, which means Bush brought the case. Right. Bush brought that case, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And you know what the case was? He wanted them to stop counting votes. And so what happened was they were counting, and every time they would be counting, that lead that Bush had was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And if they keep counting, eventually Gore was going to win Florida, which would have gave him the White House. So Bush and them filed something to say, stop counting. You know what the reason was Bush gave to stop counting the vote? Let's talk about voting. The reason he gave was, no, the reason the court gave was we need to stop the counting because if we continue to count, it could do irreparable harm to candidate Bush. Hold on, wait. We're counting votes. We're counting. So these votes that we're counting, the Supreme Court said, stop. Do not count anymore. These votes get set to the side. These people were disenfranchised. These people voted and didn't have their votes counted because the Supreme Court said stop counting because irreparable harm could be done to Bush. Forget the irreparable harm that was done to these people who vote wasn't counted or democracy in general. Gore conceded. He didn't go on for three years and say the election was stolen, right? He conceded, right? That was a stolen election. And we didn't keep on as a party, keep on bitching about it. Trump, every time he opens his mouth, because he can't, the worst thing for a guy like Trump, the worst thing for Trump is to be labeled a loser. He can't stand being called a loser. So he can't, you see this with Carrie Lake of Arizona. She lost. She lost. She won't say that she lost. It's this new thing now where people are not conceding. Can you name me one other person besides Trump and Carrie Lake that refused to concede their defeat in an election? Um, yeah, the wildly popular Stacey Abrams <laughs> down here. In Stacey Georgia. Abrams said that, the, that it was rigged, but she didn't continue to go on and on and on and say it was stolen years later. She never conceded. She did she never conceded. conceded. She never conceded that first um, um, Brian Kemp, not not the latest election, but I'm looking it up on Google right now. Five minutes later, she only she had only discussed challenges voters faced in 2018 election when she refused to concede. I'm clearly laying out the challenges that our voters face and the challenges our citizens face when we do not have government that listens to, to them. Abram said it of a 2019 video of her saying she had won the race. I acknowledge that Brian Kemp. I acknowledge that Brian Kemp won. I acknowledge it repeatedly in that speech. I very clearly say I know I'm not the governor, but what I will not do is allow the lack of nuance in our conversation to dull and obfuscate the challenges faced by our citizens. The Democratic candidate added, let's just say, so she's saying that, in fact, in that speech, she did concede, but let's say she didn't concede. She doesn't have this whole movement. There's not millions of people in this country that's running around saying Stacey Abrams didn't lose that election. She lost, right? So there, there's not this whole stop the steal thing that's going on, Right. Trump is a whole different animal when it comes to not conceding in that area, right? Um, let me ask you about the the Russia probe. Mm -hmm. Are you of the mind, you have to be, I would think, of the mind like Trump, that Russia thing was a hoax and that he was hounded the whole time from some false allegations that should have never been brought? Is that, do you believe that? Um, what What are we exactly referring to? Well, you know, because um, the Justice Department, uh, James Comey had an investigation open about possible collusion between uh, Russia trying to help Donald Trump win the 2016 campaign. Um, they was uh, Russia was doing things online, spreading misinformation. Oh, um, with that. OK, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking I was thinking something going with Russia and Ukraine. Um that's what I was thinking about your question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about the, the 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 whole thing about Russia helping him become elected, and okay. that he might be a Russian agent. 
Yeah. Right. And he always says, Russia, 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 the Russia hoax. Yeah. Right. And then Durham came out with this report that said FBI maybe didn't do their due diligence when they opened up that investigation. Do you think that that the Democrats made up this connection to Russia and to try to hobble his presidency to try to weaken him? Yeah. In, in conjunction with the U.S. media. Yeah. 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 I do. But you realize so he you can you explain how come he never says a bad word about Vladimir Putin? Hell, they might be friends. With a dictator. And last week he just praised Kim Jong un for um because North North Korea got admitted to some committee right. for the World Health Organization. And Trump praised them. Right? Trump Trump seems to praise evil dictators that hate America. But he got smoked for yeah. You know, and Angela Merkel in Germany he ain't like her. Yeah. He ain't like the he ain't like the guy in France. He didn't like him. He can't stand politicians in America, but he loved Vladimir Putin. Yeah, and he loved Kim Jong Un. So yeah. it's like he's saying it's weird that we would think that he's in bed with Russia, but it's weird that your your family was taking meetings with Russians at Trump Tower during the 2016 election cycle. Paul Manafort got I think convicted of fucking around with some Russians. Mm. Mike Michael Flynn lied to the FBI about his connection to Russia. Mm. Trump fired Mike Flynn because he lied to the FBI about his connection. To, why all these people meeting with Russia? Don Jr. said years ago, we get a lot of our money from Russia. They was talking about building a whole a Trump Tower in Moscow. There was in negotiations for the thing. It was like, why would we think that he's in bed with Vladimir Putin? Look at all the connections. Walk like a duck, talk like a duck. Yes, sir. Like, listen... If you catch me wearing red all the time, hanging around some motherfucking blood, throwing up the signs, it might be safe to say I'm a blood. Right. So I don't know, like, all right, let's move on to this. He said he could end the war in Ukraine in one day. Yeah. It's the type of stuff this guy's saying. Uh, I think he likes to hear himself. I think, like a politician, he likes to hear himself talk. He's not the most eloquent speaker. He's not as eloquent as Obama was, you know. Um, I just think as like a politician, he likes to hear himself talk. But 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 he, that, that's a lie, right? Like I mean, I can end it. Up. He said Mexico was gonna build the wall. He said Mexico was gonna pay for the wall. Yeah, yeah. The wall. He he didn't finish the wall, right? Right. He finished the wall, and just like he said, he was gonna throw uh, crooked Hillary in jail. He's right, right. So lies. Um, hell. Obama's first State of the Union address. He said he was gonna build a high speed rail to compete with um. With um Japan. Okay. So yeah, let's agree that all politicians do tell lies, right? Right, right. But this is something that Trump was saying every day on the campaign trail. <laughs> I'm gonna build a wall. Yeah. He's like, Who's gonna yeah. pay for it? Mexico. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, saying that. He was saying that for months and months and months. Right. Didn't happen. Okay, look. All right, let's let's talk about a couple other issues because the right and the left seem to be split on issues that having to do with criminal justice. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we talk about Trump, we talk about his movement. We're talking about bringing people into power, not just Trump. We talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene. We're talking about Matt Gates, Andy Biggs, all these right wingers who whenever something bad happened to black people, usually at the hand of cops, this is why I don't vote Republican. I say when I see a Republican stand up at a podium and go, you know what, that cop that shot that unarmed black man in the back, he was wrong and needs to go to jail. When I see one of them do that, then I can talk about voting Republican, right? Until they do that, we can't talk. So let me ask you about the most recent case of one of these issues that seem to split Democrats and Republicans that kind of falls along racial lines. But what about George Floyd and the officer who got convicted, one of them, the main perpetrator was uh, Derek Chauvin. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the case was decided correctly when they convicted him? I think they convicted him of a manslaughter. Do um, you think that was a proper verdict that that oh, police no. officer that knelt on George Floyd's neck got hell, into hell prison? No, no. Because, no. I mean, regardless, I mean, George Floyd was a black man, but regardless of, of, of that, he was a human. Yeah. So my feelings toward this case, my human side, you know, I have to say, hell no. He, he didn't get with that manslaughter, I mean, that was a slap on the wrist in relation to But you, but to you he think did. he should have went to prison, though? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Okay, so yeah, you do think yeah. he was wrong. Okay, because yeah. if you went to a Trump rally 
and you got on stage and said George Floyd should still be alive and this guy uh, Derek Chauvin should get more time in prison, you would need security to get out that rally. Nah, I disagree, bro. I think that's a stereo. That's a stereotype that you that a lot of black people might have about if I went to a Republican gathering or or something or something like that. I, I think that would be. A, they want to say George Floyd was on drugs, and that's what causes his right. death. If you look in the comment sections on sites like Fox News and Newsmax and other right wing publications, that's what the narrative is. They never want to say, you know, about Michael Brown, right? Mm-hmm. They say hands up, don't shoot was a lot, mm-hmm. is what they say, right? Mm-hmm. Sandra Bland, Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor, yeah. Breonna Taylor. So the right, the people that's on the right, they always find excuses for these cops. And that's, to me, that's the people when you elect Republicans, that's who you're electing. You're electing people who are not willing to look at the plight of black people and go, yeah, discrimination does in fact exist. Republicans seem to not believe that this is a thing as systemic racism. What do you think about, do you think systemic racism still exists? And now I, when it comes to this, I have, I have a different outlook than most people would. And that was a good question because in my opinion, systemic racism is the only racism that exists. Anything other than that, if a regular white person walking down the street they don't like me because quote unquote i don't like you because you a nigga i don't like you because you black right that to me that just shows you you're ignorant as hell you don't know me but to show you don't like me just based on this that just told me that doesn't necessarily mean you're racist because me saying you're racist mean i'm giving you subconsciously you got power over me i don't put myself in a position and i taught my kids this too to be victimized based off of terms um so so with that being said i don't i don't I mean racist i don't just throw that label or i don't throw that around loosely just say anybody if you got a problem with me i won't necessarily racist you just might be dumb you might be stupid as hell but if somebody called me a nigger i'm gonna say that guy's a racist even though he may not have the power to affect my life at that mm-hmm. particular point in time because we understand racism you have to have power right for something mm-hmm. to really be racist prejudice is one thing i don't mm-hmm. like you because of some superficial reason that's prejudice right, right. right? racism is a power structure mm. um but you, certainly if you have a job and you're not going to get a, a promotion because the boss is white he don't he, he prefers to have a white person in that position you know what i mean i had a job before where i was doing i was getting commission I make a lot of money for this company. And I went and talked to one of my white colleagues and I asked him what percentage he was getting. And out of the sales he was getting, they were giving him 90%. I mm-hmm. said, 90? Now me, I was the top salesperson at the right. company. I was getting 65. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, well, why would he get 90? I'm getting 65, but I'm selling way more than this dude. Right. That's racism. Right. All right. Let's talk about the cases against Trump. Right. He got a case in New York, Alvin Bragg. Um, he got a case in New York, Letitia James. It's the um how he fudging the numbers on the value of his property, right? Um, and Fanny Willis down there in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. She got the probe going on for when he called the Secretary of State. Raffensperger said, I only need you to find me 11,781 votes. Right. So which she's mean, looking which at could bringing mean anything. Which could, huh? mean any, which could mean, that could mean anything. What? It could mean anything. Ow! Oh, it could mean down, anything. He, 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 he's, down he by 11, 000, he's down by 11,780 votes. He calls the Secretary of State and said, I need you to find me 11,781. Only one more than I need. In other words, he's trying to say, I need you to erase 11,000 some odd votes. <laughs> I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, you, you can't speculate and let and let that hold up in a court of law. You can't speculate what he meant and and say that held up in a, in a court of it's law. Cl- what do you think he meant when he said, I just find me 11,781 votes? What you thought he meant? Regardless of what I thought he meant, that won't hold up in a court, in a court of well, law. No, but I'm just asking, what do you think he meant? What do you think he was doing? 
on that phone call. What you think he was doing? I don't know what. Um, I'm sure he had his own reasons for that, but I don't think that was um, erase eleven thousand, give him the meat. I don't think that's that's not what he was. Well, you have to explain to me, that. sir. What is he saying when he says find me eleven thousand seven hundred eighty one votes? What is he saying? What do you mean? I'm I'm talking to you right now. You're Brad Raffensperger. I'm Trump. Sir, find me 11,781 votes. What am I just asking you to do? What would you do after we got off this phone call? How would you find me those votes? It was a lot of smoke and mirrors going on around at that time. 11,000 could have been found somewhere outside somewhere. It could have been found in a bucket somewhere. That's because, I mean, like they said, it wasn't very secure. The process was broken. How? It wasn't. What? How was it not I, secure? I, I'm, I'm telling you personally, I've seen it down here in Georgia, in Atlanta. I, Sir, you don't have yes. any evidence of election fraud. None. You have zero evidence of election fraud. You have zero evidence. None. If you had some, it's your duty as an American citizen to go to the proper authorities and bring your evidence to them and say, here's where there's fraud at. Y'all need to go handle that. You don't I just have think any evidence that you could take to a court. I, I just think the Democrats have gotten better at it. So we're guessing. We're guessing. That's what this all is, is a guessing game. But how can you accuse people of cheating without evidence? That's a that's a hell of a charge. That's a hell of a charge. 60 court cases. None of them found any fraud. None of them. Matter of fact, when they do find fraud, Arizona did a recount. They did Arizona did three recounts. Yeah, I remember that. Do you know every time they do a recount, Joe Biden gets more votes? I this haven't heard that. Hey, this is a Republican committee. The cyber ninja cats, that phony baloney ass outfit that was down there, talk about bamboo and they had the things set up and spinning the things around and looking at all the that audit turned up more votes for Trump for, for Biden. Like when we look at when we look at people that voted more than once in the last presidential election, you know most of those people is Republicans. Like look at the big stories that come out when they say somebody got found voting. I think uh Mark Meadows, Trump's chief of staff. He was registered to vote. He was living over here and registered to vote in a whole nother state. Mm. And he voted, I think, mm. twice. Trump said dead people vote. Where's the evidence? <laughs> 2016, he said, three yeah. million illegal immigrants voted. Give me that. Where's the evidence? Trump, do you know that? People? Yes, I know. You know for real? Yes. Let me see it. Let me see it. Show me that evidence. Three million illegal? Damn. You got a crack squad on your team that brought you there. Yes, they did. Bring it to me. Let me see it. Put that in the court of law. Nothing. Nothing. Just throwing shit out there. No evidence. No evidence. And so he says Alvin Bragg, New York. Letitia James, Attorney General of New York. Fannie Willis, DA, what is that? Fulton County. Fulton County, yeah. He says they're all racist. What? I never heard Alvin Bragg say nothing bad about white folks. Letitia never heard her say nothing bad about. I don't see her hanging around racist organizations. Fannie Willis. I don't. Why is he calling them racist? These three black law enforcement officers. Why are he calling them racist? What's racist about them? Your guess would be as good as mine. Your guess. Well, he's trying to is, turn. Is, is yeah. All these trailer park people. These NASCAR people. He trying to turn their ire and anger against these black folk. Mm. He just said, oh, they're because they're coming after me. They're right. That boy got a lot of cases. He got a lot of oh, cases yeah. out. He yeah. just got found liable of sexual abuse. For um, E. Jean Carroll lawsuit out in New York, where she said she that he raped her mm -hmm. inside the department store. You think that was a made up case? Um. The gist of it, yes. It was so politically think, motivated and it's, it's part of the witch hunt. So you think she's lying about that? Whatever went on is not my place to say whether she lied or not. My, what I would speak on is the coverage 
the media coverage, which leans one way. And it's all about to side, sidetracking him for 2024. <laughs> okay. What about the fact that he paid off the porn star Stormy Daniels? Because that's one of the cases that's about to happen. Because he lied about it and he put he he filled out his campaign finance reports falsely on purpose, is what they're saying, so that he could cover up the fact that he paid her off. Right. Michael Cohen writes the checks, right? The lawyer that went to jail for this, Trump's ex-lawyer. He writes the checks and then Trump reimburses Cohen. Right. And then they put when they pay Cohen the money, they put 34 different times in their financial disclosures that that was for Michael Cohen's legal work. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't for legal work. Okay, It was just paying him back for paying off the porn star that he ended up having sex with when his wife was laid up in the hospital pregnant. (laughs) This is the guy y'all want to vote for president. This guy. Well, okay, so. What about that that case? Is that a made-up case? The same, you very, and I I applaud you because you're very, um, very detail-oriented. But those same details, would that be under scrutiny? The Hunter Biden laptop, would that be under the same scrutiny as all the details that Trump is uh, being bombarded with? I'm so glad you brought up the Hunter Biden laptop. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to say this with confidence. Because I'll I'll probably be dead in 2089. Hopefully somebody will find this video and I will say <laughs> there's nothing on that laptop. Oh, uh, <laughs> on it. There's nothing on that laptop. You know oh, why okay. nothing on that laptop? Okay. If they keep talking about it, but they're not bringing no evidence forward. They don't they, <laughs> where's the smoking gun on this? He got a right. couple, he, he he got a couple of pictures of him smoking crack. Yeah. Him and some hookers is on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this guy bought a gun when he wasn't supposed to, Hunter, right? Okay, but number one, Hunter's not running for office, right? Right, his father is. So why why are we? And then Trump, they they said they had his laptop for five years. So this this laptop was in possession of the government during the Trump years. Mm -hmm. And Trump had the White House, he had the Senate, and he had the House of Representatives. How come they didn't do something with Hunter Biden and this whole thing when Trump was in office? Well, you know, that's just like I said earlier, bro. Two sides of the same coin, regardless of where you stand on it. Same thing as Hillary and her server, her email server. Okay, so what about the document scandal right now where Trump had these classified documents at Mar-a-Lago and Bedminster in New Jersey? And Well, it's the, the same that. thing like you just said about Hunter Biden's laptop. I remember when they, they raided Mar-a-Lago. I'm still waiting to see what they found. And then they supposedly found some documents in, in Biden's garage. I hadn't heard anything since. Well, Biden voluntarily, first of all, they didn't even know that Biden had documents, right? Biden was the one to say, yo, I got some documents over here. Here they go. Right. And then they searched this place and then they didn't find anything else. He gave over voluntarily all the documents. Pence did the same thing. Voluntarily gave over the documents. Trump. They said, give me the documents. He gives them 15 (laughs) boxes. He don't give them all up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they keep they come back and they want to search. They move boxes around. The lawyer writes a letter saying that's all. That's all we got. Yeah. And and then he got a snitch inside. This is how the FBI and the DOJ know about these extra documents still there because they got a snitch inside. And somebody go on the FBI and say, yo, listen, I work there. It's some old documents there. And so then they got to have a, a, a subpoena. He wasn't raided. Right. Right, raid because we know what a raid looks like, right? Kicking uh, the door, yeah, waving but, the fofo. You know what yeah, I mean? Yes, sir. Wasn't he, he out of town? Was he wasn't he out of town when they did it though? I believe Trump he, wasn't. I believe he was not, yeah. I think he was yeah. out of town at the time of that the execution of the search warrant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was a it was a it was a duly uh impaneled subpoena search warrant. A judge signed off on it. The FBI legally Listen, because we can't be talking about Trump getting treated unfairly because I'm looking at a black man right now. And we both know black people that had the cops come into their house and do them dirty. We both know black people that then went in front of the court and got smacked when they weren't supposed to get smacked. Yeah. 
So now all of a sudden, all the Republicans want to say, oh, the justice system ain't fair. We've been saying that for saying a that thousand for- years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, now the justice system ain't fair. Now yeah. y'all want to say how it's a two-tier justice system? No, yeah. it ain't really a justice system that's different for Democrats and Republicans, right? It's really different for rich and poor. Yeah, right. That's really how this country works, right? If you got money, you can get away with almost anything, you know, because right. we've seen some, we just seen some black stars that then got off because mm-hmm. they had money, yep. you know what I mean? And they was guilty. And we didn't see some black poor people that was innocent. Most of the people that get let free from the innocent project is black. Mm. Meaning they was about to end up facing a death penalty if the innocence project didn't come in and review their case and fight for them. So many black people, over a hundred black people would have been dead right now if the innocence project didn't. So, but, but Trump saying that everything is unfair against me is rich. Oh no. Watch this part. His father is a gazillionaire, was. Father gives him a ton of money to start his first business. Like, you go out, you go get it. I go out, I go get it. This guy, hands ain't never been dirty. Right. Boy ain't never washed no dish. He ain't never served nobody, no mashed potatoes. You know what I mean? He never dug a ditch or nothing like that. The man lost money with a casino. Listen. A casino, people just come in and drop off their money. <laughs> it's a bank with lights. Like, yeah. how do you lose money on how a casino? Money? Yeah. This is the guy that people is voting for. Like, the guy, this is this is the guy that goes to all of his rally. He played YMCA by the village people. I don't understand it. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what you <laughs> y'all see in this guy that make that should be the guy that represents America right there. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm trying to figure this shit out. Um, okay. So what he remember what he said about John McCain? Um, John, what do you say? He prefer his heroes. He said, Yeah, I like people that didn't get captured. Yeah, I prefer my heroes not to be captured. Yeah. Like this is the kind of stuff he does. The access Hollywood tapes. What do he say? Yeah. I just grabbed him by the pussy. Yeah. You voted for him after he said that. Come on, Nate. Come on, Nate. Like, how do you vote for a guy that admits to a sexual assault? Like you were saying, the E.G. and Carroll case where he raped the lady, where she says she she got raped by him. That's a phony case. Mm-hmm. But on the Access Hollywood tape, he admits that's how I roll. Mm-hmm. If I wanted, I take it. Yeah. So how do you reconcile the two? How do you say this case over here got to be phony, but you got him on tape saying I grab him by the pussy? I don't even ask him. Selective outrage, my man. On my part? No, oh, no, no. And and it's just it's not a new phenomenon either. I mean, when it comes to these these things, it's cutthroat, it's selective outrage, it's what's put out at the time. Um, I mean, I, I was more offended. I mean, <laughs> when Biden's saying he's more blacker than me. Well, he didn't say that, right? Well, he I said, know you know it. You know, I know exactly he told what he said, but that's how I took it. You well, I but he said, right? He said to Charlemagne. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you, if you need to question whether you black, if you're not voting for me, you need to question whether you black or not. Something to that effect. Yeah, exactly. Then you yeah. ain't black. Something like that. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm like, how could you be, how could you, I thought to myself, when it was the choice between Trump and Biden and you're black, how could you even wonder which one of these guys you should vote for? Well, Charlemagne's perfect response would have been, well, give me what your definition of black is. What's your definition of black? That's a good question, actually. It has some depth to it and is mostly... um, you know what my simple definition of black is? What's that? People say Tiger Woods ain't black. Some people say Barack Obama wasn't black. I say if you drive a nice car in a white neighborhood, if the cops pull you over, are you likely to get your head split open? You're black. You're black. That's a black person. I mean, it's deeper definition of what black is. I'm just talking about very surface level Simple. That's a black person. Like what the good old boy, when he see you in that car, what do he think? Nigger, pull him over, beat him. That's black. 
That's a black person, right? So I think that's what Biden was saying. It's like, it's two choices. Like, how could y'all vote for, like, let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Because Trump don't like them, right? I don't either. Right. But do you believe Black Lives Matter? Oh, of course. And and the movement was basically started after the whole George Floyd thing. So you do you believe in the movement Black Lives Matter? No. So you don't believe in the movement? No. The movement was co-opted. I mean, we all know the movement was was was, was hijacked and co-opted and turned into something that's not in line with the statement Black Lives Matter. So the organization Black Lives Matter fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Cool. But the movement, the activists on the ground nationwide that's marching on behalf of racial justice, it's, this, it's an extension of the civil rights movement from the 60s, right? Yeah. I would say um, the... What's the word I'm looking for? I, I think it was disingenuous. I think overall the, the movement BLM was disingenuous. The organization, However, not the movement, though, right? You I'm about, sorry, I'm sorry. The organization, the organization, the organization right? Yeah, yeah. But the, the movement but see, that's not what Black Lives Matter is, right? Black Lives Matter is not Black Lives Matter Inc. Like the idea of Black Lives Mattering, that's a real movement, mm -hmm. right? So I think people get those two things confused. And so when people say, yeah. When people say Black Lives Matter or they're a Marxist or terrorist organization, we're not even talking about the organization no more. We're not mm -hmm. we, me as a black person. We're not even talking about that. We talking about okay. okay. We talk about Black Lives it mattering, okay. right? Yeah. So we course. should, if we have a shirt that says Black Lives Matter on it, we should be proud to wear that. Yeah. Not that we are aligned with some particular organization. We're stating the idea to the world black lives matter and what's implied in that statement black lives black lives matter too we know all lives matter mm -hmm. we're trying to say black lives matter too it's never mm -hmm. been a question whether or not white lives mattered we knew that but see all the people on trump's side want to down diversity inclusion equity they got they keep on talking this woke stuff you know what woke is you know what woke is well, um, and I, yeah, because I could I could see going back maybe fifteen years when when I start first started hearing the term woke was reserved for the black conscious community. But that's what it is. Yes, mm, yes. no, that's what woke is. That's yeah, all. Woke yeah, is. yeah, woke that's is. all woke is. Right, right, woke, right. Woke is being aware of social injustice and having empathy and respect. For those marginalized communities, mm -hmm. right? That's what, to me. That's what woke is, right? And it really came from like a song from a blues player a long time ago, where he was talking about stay woke and stuff like that. Um, Childish Gambino on the song Redbone, he sings "Stay Woke" on there, right? And the opposite of woke is what sleep, right? But now the right wing keeps on saying yeah. woke ideology, yeah. woke university, woke company, woke. You know, woke, 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 because you know what they do? They did the same thing with the word liberal. They made it a bad word. They made it a pejorative. So now these folks that talk about they hate woke, anti woke, they don't know what the hell woke is. Right. It's just their word to try to point over at the boogeyman over there and go, that person is woke. We don't like that. Mm -hmm. But see, that's when you vote for Trump. You voting for people to come in right behind him that's doing that. And we keep playing this game with Trump. You're going to go 40, 50 years. We're going to be right back in 1950. Ah, oh, man. Come that's on, what bro. Marjorie Taylor Greene would like to do. You got Ron DeSantis down there in Florida banning books. They took they took the sister's poetry out of the school. The one that made the, um, the Biden inauguration, the young black girl. Mm -hmm. They took her poem out in Florida. Why? Because she had the audacity to say anything about inequality in that speech. I mean, they 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 changed the term in some books in Florida from slavery, yeah, to um forced migration or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, something like that. Listen, they don't want their children to know the history of this country. That they don't want to know. This is what you're voting for when you vote for Trump. People like that, right? Because I'll give you a perfect example. A certain segment of the population, they will always say, 
when we talk about Vietnam, we talk about World War II, we talk about the nations that we went in and saved militarily. Mm -hmm. Those people say, we, look what we did. We saved them. We the greatest country on the face of the earth. We landed on the moon. All the good stuff is we. We talk about slavery, it's not we. Right. That was them. Mm. That was them. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. It's either all we or it's all them. He said, well, I didn't own no slaves. Okay, we, but we're not saying that. We're saying that you benefiting. Don't you believe that there's a large number of white people who have benefited from slavery that still continue to benefit from the after effects of slavery to this day? Right. Trump don't think that. And nobody that's, most people that's voting for Trump don't believe that. And so if we can't identify the problem, if we can't admit that we had a problem, if we can't admit that this country did certain people wrong and that those effects continue to linger, we can't fix that problem because we're not going to admit we had it. If you're trying to get off a of dope, you can't get off a of dope until you admit you're an addict. We can't move past what slavery and racism has brought on this country until we admit the effects that it actually has. We can't exactly. move past it until somebody admits to it. Exactly. Right? Every time you bring up reparations, somebody want to be mad about reparations. Uh, I mean, Japanese but what about got theirs? Uh, Indians we were, got theirs. We were just talking about this a couple of days ago. Where is it where it's written that um that black I, think, I don't know if, it, if the terminology used the word Negroes or, or, or whatever, but they said it was black three-fifths human. In the Constitution. Okay. Why hasn't anyone ever made a move to amend what is stated there? Because if we really knew what our laws and everything stated, we're just relegated to civil rights, not human rights. As long as you... Subscribe to this three fifths human thing. That's still like, like you said in the Constitution, we chasing civil rights. It's like a, it's, it's like a dog chasing his tail. Well, there's a certain group of people in this country that have a particular reverence for the Constitution. Now, I think that the Constitution is overall a pretty decent document, right? It's trash in the fact that you talk about three fifths and you had to add these amendments later on in order right. to get kind of full freedom in effect to be able to get women the, the, the right to vote. I don't know if that was like the 19th Amendment or whatever it was, but you had to add all this stuff to make it even better, right? But there's a certain amount of people that's like the Constitution is like the Bible to them. Uh, I mean, same same kind of people that listen. You have a, a child that's graduated college, two, right? Yeah. Two that graduated college, right. and when your child was going to elementary school or middle school, if your child decided not to stand up for the pledge of allegiance in school, how would you take that? I would be tickled because they just like. <laughs> it's just like me. I mean, I would be tickled by it. Right. But you see, there's some people in this country who, if you don't stand for the pledge, right, they're going to call you un-American. Right. It's going to be, I had a controversy with my son because he wasn't going to stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance in school. Mm -hmm. And they tried to kick him out and I had to go down there and talk to some people. Like, listen, in America, you have the First Amendment mm -hmm. is freedom of speech. That also means I have the freedom not to speak. Right. Nobody can force me to speak. Right. Right. And now you want me to pledge allegiance. They don't listen to the word. I right. pledge allegiance. Yeah. I don't pledge allegiance to a flag. I don't. I don't. Right. I'm going to pledge allegiance to my mama, yeah. my daddy, my family, the people that's riding for me. I'm riding for them. That's who I pledge allegiance to. I'm not pledging my allegiance to a flag. What? This flag that was the banner that flew over slavery and Jim Crow and all this other stuff. Plus the second verse of the uh, Star Spangled Banner is a motherfucker. It's, the, the second verse is real crazy, right? And the and the first verse is the damn war song. Hmm. Know what I mean, so the side that you that you voted for Trump, they said Colin Kaepernick called him a son of a bitch. They happy he got blackballed out the league because he because he he knelt during the anthem. What you think about that? I I don't know. I just think he was part of the game that was being played at the time. And I tell you that because when I found out he got that check a lot sooner than people realized he got that check, yet he had people still out there making statements on his behalf and in his name and found out he got that check and it came with a non-disclosure. 
months earlier. I mean, it is. I mean, it was. It is what it is. I, I was never one to be rah rah about Kaepernick anyway about that whole situation. But the idea that the whole league mm-hmm. would tell him that he needs to apologize right, right. or oh oh yeah yeah right with that you know of course I thought that was I thought that was bullshit because bullshit remember the when game. they did the same thing to um the guy played for the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Abdul Rahim, Chris Jackson, yeah, my Chris man, Jackson. Uh, you saw the documentary yeah. that was out recently. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got dead dirty for yeah. the same type of thing. Same thing, yeah. Cause he, a guy like Trump likes that. You know what I'm saying? Like culturally speaking, because cu- Trump is a culture warrior, right? And the well, war is against brown people. Let me ask. Let me ask you this, because I'm still. This is something. I'm. I'm. I'm still perplexed by me and you around the same like i said earlier around the same age or whatever you remember back in in the days in the 80s when we used to watch boxing and hbo and everything and you always see trump sitting next to uh don king trump next to so-and-so trump next to so-and-so rappers all wanted to be like trump everybody's talking about trump when did he become racist Okay, so when we look at rap, rap is very aspirational. So Trump wasn't the only name that was getting dropped, right? So Biggie right, said, right. Biggie and other people that said Robin Leach. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They talk about the Forbes list. They talk about the Rob Report, that magazine, and everything like that. Anything that got to do with wealth. So Trump was, you know, this exemplification of wealth in America, mm-hmm. right? So they, the rappers would drop their name and and the cousin. If you was the, if you was able to get around them. Right. He was a New York guy. Right. So a lot of rappers coming out of New York, you know, you get up next to him. It's like, yo, I'm with Trump. I'm with this money guy. Just like Jay kick yeah. with Warren Buffett. Right. Yeah. So and it's very, it's very likely most of the people that was like, yo, Trump is my dude, yada, yada, yada. They didn't realize that in the 70s he got sued because he wouldn't rent the black people in the apartment building that he owned. They probably didn't know that part. Right. So but he wasn't talking all of that stuff back then. Now, at one point he did say. The Central Park Five, yep. he falsely accused them, mm-hmm. took out a full page ad in a newspaper and said they should get hung or some stuff like that, right? But it then some black people and rappers especially overlooked that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Someone maybe didn't even didn't even know. But when did he become this racist guy? When he came down the elevator escalator. And the first thing he said was Mexico sending their rapist. Mm-hmm. And murderers over here, like that's a pretty broad brush to paint with. To say that these people that's coming here for a better life, that most of them is basically criminals, right. right? And so that's how you start the campaign. Then he said, "The cops, you know how when the cops they put you in the car, they want to put the head or hand over the head." And I say, "Take the hand away," right? In other words, when you put them in the car, do it rough. Yeah, right. That's that. Racism shit. You know what I mean? When you talk about Maxine Waters, the way he talked about her, all these black women that he got all these pro the way he talks about them, that's a lot of racism involved in that. His his backing of the this whole idea about the 2020 riots. They say they want to compare the 2020 riots to January 6th. Well, all these riots went down. Nobody got arrested. Yes, people got arrested for the riots. Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. But the argument is that essentially, yo, y'all not arresting these black people. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what the argument, and this is what Trump. He's in the same lane with those people, those folks at his rally. Anything they got to do with black people getting ahead, they are booing that. Right? Yeah, it's a black person running for president right now. Tim Scott, Republican side. That and I'm I'm sorry. That's what I neglected to mention earlier. I would support Tim Scott first and foremost. Yeah. Um. As as the as the if he would have become the Republican nominee, I would I would support Tim Scott. And that boy don't even got a position on. He don't have a position on much of anything. I listen to his speeches. I've, been, I've, been, I've heard him speak, bro. I, I, I come on. Now. I listened to his speech from Iowa like two days ago. I don't know when the video gonna come out, but it was it was Jan, it was it was June like third or fourth when he gave that speech, and he really didn't say nothing in the speech yeah. except for I come from uh, my my people was dirt poor. My mama taught me never to be a victim, and this country is not racist. That's basically what he said in the speech. And it's like, 
bro, like, and but, but you know, thing. as as I'm saying, two sides of the same coin, though. You know, like you just said about Tim Scott, I saw the same thing down here in a in in a, in a senatorial race that had nationwide interest. Um, um, Warnock, Brownfield, Warnock, same thing. I mean, same thing. I mean, his commercials. He he walking around licking ice cream with puppies and and stuff like that. Uh. Same thing, bro. I just, I just want to. Raphael Warnock had a sides. vision for what he was trying to do, right? He, you, mm. he stated his real positions. Like Tim Scott, his views is all thirty thousand foot, and it's basically right wing talking points. But with the added, the the thing that Tim Scott adds that they all don't. I'm black, and the country has worked out well for me. Yeah, that's the only that that's the difference between him and yeah. every other Republican. If he was white, he wouldn't even have that. He would just be saying the same exact stuff right. they saying. Yeah, he's saying the same exact stuff they saying with the added part. I'm black, and this country's worked well for me. Y'all need to quit saying that America's racist. And we out here, listen. I know you ain't gonna try to tell me that America's not still racist. <laughs> We're not about to say that, are we? Uh-huh. I'm black. I live it. I don't. I don't want yeah. there to be a racist society in America. Right. Right. But it just is yeah. what it is. Okay, let me add, so Dinesh D'Souza, you might not even know who he is, but he came up with a movie called 2,000 Mules. The name's familiar, yeah. The right, Dinesh, familiar. he's the Indian guy, right, Republican. But he tweeted, I think last week, this was a, this is a quote from his tweet, virtually every IQ study over the past half century shows that blacks who are the rock-solid base of the Democratic Party have the lowest IQ of any ethnic group one standard deviation below whites and Asian Americans. Now, do you believe that black people, generally speaking, have lower IQ than every other ethnic group? Oh, most definitely not. Okay, but see, Dinesh D'Souza, that's another Trump supporter. This is what they believe. Stephen Miller, who worked for the Trump campaign, is a white nationalist, right? Uh, Tucker Carlson, who's a big Trump guy, had white nationalists working for him over at Fox. This is who Trump has unleashed. This is who Trump is aligned with. Um, So that's why, particularly when it comes to Black people supporting Trump, I have to really dig deep on this because the people that he aligns himself with and the ideas that he speaks on oftentimes have to do with further marginalizing and diminishing and oppressing and suppressing black people and voices. So I don't know how you vote for Trump and get around the fact that that vote is in fact going to be detrimental to black and brown people. Suppression, oppression and suppression. Suppressing the vote. Yeah. That could only be a happen, occur to you if, if allowed. Well, listen, what Georgia passed a law where you couldn't hand water to people standing in line. No, Georgia didn't pass that law. We, we took civics in middle school and we learned that in seventh, seventh, eighth grade, maybe that outside of a certain foot, you know, length outside of the, of a polling place, it could be seen as, as campaigning. A um, hundred feet. That's a hundred feet. Well, 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 regardless of what it is, they took that and made it into, oh, they don't want black folks to eat pizza in line. But why would they, why did they all of a sudden feel the need to make this law now? When was it, when did, when did giving water to somebody? That's always, it's always been. I don't, I don't know who, who made it, what it was in this last election cycle, but that's always been. I can't do electioneering. I can't do campaigning inside of a hundred feet of the door. Mm -hmm. I can't give you a hat a button, a t-shirt with my candidate's name on it. I can't hand you water with my candidate's logo on it. But I can give you a bottle of Aquafina. But now under that Georgia law, you can't do that. So, and, and look, and then they make it so black people don't have a lot of places where they can go vote. Not they, true. Shrink the, they shrink the voting location so now the lines is longer. People standing outside and I can't even give somebody some water. Uh, bro, I've been, I've been, like I said, I've been voting since 90, 96. Yeah. And I can remember the very first time I went to vote, I stood in line for three hours. So this is not a new phenomenon of stopping, making the lines longer to forget. And, and at that time, I want to say 96, I, let me ask you this. Yeah. 
the where where majority white people vote where you live. Like let's say majority white people that vote where I live, mm-hmm. they don't be having them long lines. It's only in urban centers where I see these long lines. Well, in in, in I'm in I'm in suburban Atlanta right now, and at that time I was on the north side in, in north side, and the lines were just as long. But I'm like everywhere you go, it's just it's just like that. And I mean, it's just and it's everywhere now. Everybody wants to get in and feel feel like they want to be heard. They want to get their vote in because they say, "I want my vote to count." You know, you got that. Then you got. And they, they've made it easier. They may actually made it easier for people to vote by extending Saturdays um, like they did a few months ago. I mean, they the ballot, the boxes. Um, I think they've actually made it easier. I, I don't understand. Honestly, man, I, I don't understand what all the complaining. I mean, like I said, I've been voting for 20 some years. I don't understand where the complaining all this. Um, they're making it harder for us. Disenfran- I've never felt disenfranchised. I'm going in there just to vote and leave. I, I don't. If I'm going to vote, I might bring a chair. If I if, if I'm expecting long lines, I'll bring a chair and my own water. You know what you're facing when you're going in to vote now. So and 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 I live, like I said, Metro Atlanta has become like a hotbed, bro. Every every election is always by I don't whatever time the polls might open, maybe 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. By 10 30, the news is there and they already got a report. People say at this place. They got extremely long lines and machines are unplugged. This always like, like, man, come on, plug them in and just start. It ain't, it ain't some plot to stop you from voting. It's It'll not. No, it's not. Cause we can't say, and I, I'm only based, basing it on where I live, Metro Atlanta. We can't say this is a black haven of what has become and then turn around and say, they're stopping us from doing this. Like a few years ago, the ridiculous statement that people start calling Atlanta Wakanda. I'm like, but. But you, but you turn around and complaining because you can't get pizza in line to go vote. Because you know what? Because those decisions are made by the state legislature and the secretary of state, mm-hmm. right? Your secretary of state in Georgia was a Republican, Brad Raffensperger. Yeah. I don't know who it is right now, right? But the, your your state legislature, I don't know if it's if it's dominated by Republicans or Democrats or not, right? But that's how those laws of the state get changed mm-hmm. to attempt to suppress the vote. You know what I mean? It's by those, those, so it's like the whole city could be black, right? But the people that make the law on the state level is maybe white Republicans. Well, listen, we got an election coming up. Here's a, here's what I would like to do. I would like to continue this conversation and keep bringing you back on because I think that going into the 2024 election, Politics is going to be a very hot story. And I think it's fantastic. I have the opportunity to talk to somebody from the other side. So now, because I know you kind of following a little bit what's going on or whatever. But now that I'm saying I please need you to come back, maybe you could start zeroing in on certain particular issues, mm-hmm. get some notes together, come ready to smack the dog shit out of me on this on yeah. this platform. Yeah. And let's continue to have this conversation Um, because I think the people will want to hear it. So I would like to see maybe next time you talk, you tell me all the bad things that you think about Biden, what's yeah. going on in the Republican field, you know, and just let's get let's get all this together because sure. this, this argument in terms of are we going to reelect a guy like Trump? That conversation is not going to stop until the 2024 election. So we might as well just continue the conversation. I, just, yeah. I think you I think you're very nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wish I need you to be a little bit meaner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can man. With a great heart, but I just need you to yeah. I need you to be an ask. I got you, bro. Most magas are assholes. You know, yeah. you're not like that. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a maggot. That's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. You I'm just a guy sense. twice. I'm just a common sense dude, bro. You don't, do you got a MAGA hat? My son did. Uh, when he went his freshman year, he went to college. He, he had a MAGA hat, and when he left, he left it. I knew he left it in his room over there and everything. But is he still? Does he still support? Does he still support Trump? No, nah, it's it's kind of like me, man. We just we really don't take we really don't die hard politics take stuff seriously like that. Um, stuff that relate that that that's pertains personally. To us, like like we were saying earlier, it might pertain to me. And I like when I come back, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have me some stuff 
I'm going to have me some some notes down and everything, but um, stuff that pertains personally, like I'm more interested in voting for my local elections than than the dog and pony show that national elections are. Yeah. All politics um, is essentially local. So, yeah, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I and I just kind of take the national stuff as it as it comes. All right. I'm not I, I hope I don't have to edit. I don't want to edit. So anyway, what I'm going to say is <laughs> Nate, the professor, you know what I mean? And also owner of Sue Aromatics, yeah, like yeah. Sue Chef, not S-U-E, but like Sue Chef Aromatics. That's the product right there on your screen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go to do they have a do you have a website? Right? Yeah, it's um it's suearomatics.com, S-O-U-S, aromatics.com. Uh, you can find me on TikTok at Sue Aromatics on Instagram at the Professor Seventy Three Food Dope Podcast and Sue Aromatics, and this is our, our little box right here, a little gift box. Sue Aromatics, um, yeah, check them out. They hip hop inspired, hip hop and culinary inspired, um, luxury candles. Um, we got about eight or nine fragrances right now. Something that everybody can love. And you go go cop those candles. And if you you a dude, you might listen to this hardcore rap. And next time you come on, we're gonna talk about rap because I know you in the rap a lot. But yeah. listen, y'all dudes out there might think I'm a dude. Why am I buying a candle? Ladies like the candles. We like the candle up. The lady come over, she's impressed by that type of thing. They Trust love me. it. They love it. Trust love me. It. Yeah. So go cop you some of them candles. He got the one called crumbling peaches and herb. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I got crumbling peaches and herb, purple tape, wood wheel. Uh, it's unbelievable. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Ice Cream Man. Oh, man. Um, you, you you can see it on the website. I got them all. And you could actually read about on the website the inspiration for each candle and how I came up with the name. Yeah, we got some hip hop candles in the building. And for we're sure. going to see him next time. Nate, the professor, thank you for joining us today. And then we'll see you next time. Thank you, bro. Y'all be good.